are you doing today? I'm good, yourself? Good, good, good. Well, welcome to Indianapolis. Thank you. Thank yes. You. First of all, where did the name Pooch oh, come from? Um, I've been Pooch since I was in my mom's Pooch. <laughs> um, like my father, who's, uh, he's from down south, and he never gets anybody's um, name right. And so um, our next door neighbor, uh, Mr. Sully, was always like, uh, when I was in my mom's stomach, oh, how's Pookie doing? How's Pookie doing? And uh, my father started saying Poochie. And uh, my mom was like, oh, you know, he's saying, he's saying Pookie. My father's like, I don't know, that's what I'm saying. Like, your name is Miss Merrill? Mm -hmm. Like, my father would call you, hey, how you doing, Miss Cheryl? <laughs> you know, so uh, he's one of those guys who just gets everyone's name wrong. I can relate. I yeah. can relate. I so, can yeah, relate. So, yeah, that's where it started. Okay, and how did you go into acting versus wanting to become a boxer? Um, well, growing up in Massachusetts, um, you know, athletics for a lot of black youth was uh, was a way out in a, in, in a sense. Um, not to be like the cliche, like, you know, we don't come from much, so, you know, let's kind of rely on sports. But, like, sports was something that, you know, kept you off the street, kept you, um, gave you uh, growth, taught you discipline. And... Um, I, uh, my father started me when I was young, I was like, you know, as far as I, back I can remember, my father said five, four, five, mm -hmm. he started teaching me, but then ever since then, I, I, I stayed in the gym as far as learning how to box, and then um, I was fast, so I could play football, uh, that's why I started playing football too, so, um, but for the most part, I, I boxed up until, you know, I didn't like getting hit that much, so. Um, the hitting that I wanted to do was on the field, okay. and uh, so I started playing football, and football was kind of like crazy, so then I went back into boxing, uh, something that's, boxing something that I'm really good at, okay. so don't, don't mess with me when you see me on the street. <laughs> um, All right. So yeah, um, I went 9-0 as an amateur, won Southern New England Golden Gloves, um, won the Diamond Belt, um, and uh, mass, mass Invitationals, I mean, yeah. Okay. And then so from boxing to acting, where did that segue take place? Well, uh, as far as boxing, um, there was, a, there was a, a brief dark moment in my life <laughs> where um, I got into some trouble and um, my father who's always been in my uh, corner and, um, you know, he went through, we went through a uh, dark period in our time in, in my life and um, I continued to play football. I, I you know, just picked up where I left off as far as the whole football situation. Got back into school, uh, UMass Dartmouth, and I started playing football there and um, they were posting flyers up around school to come be in a movie. And um, so they say, like, come be in a movie. So I was like, yeah, check it out. And um, I think it was an, an open call for the film Outside Providence. And I went down there. It was a in the in the in the actor world is called a cattle call. Okay. You, know, you show up to, to go do a movie or check out a movie or come be in a movie, and there'll be like hundreds of people there. I showed up at this this conservatory and there's just hundreds of people, and I was just like, oh wow. I mean, you know, who doesn't want to be in a movie in a sense? So um, I was very fortunate to get chosen, got a featured role in the film Outside Providence that uh, starred Alec Baldwin, um, it was directed by Michael Correnti, uh, Amy Smart, and Sean Hattison, and uh, I play uh, DJ Swift. And it, was, it took place in the 70s, so I had my afro going and everything, so uh, it was really, really cool, but it was like one of my first tastes of, of what showbiz world was. Okay. And I said, uh, this is it. This is, this, is, this, this is for me. That was just Derwin Davis. Yeah. How did you land that role? Oh, God. <laughs> All right, I went in for Derwin. Uh-huh. I went in for Derwin. I auditioned with Derwin. Did it a few times. It's okay. We want you, we want you to come back from the week. So, um, Suzanne Goddard Smith was a casting director. So, she brought me back in for a while. From a week. And, um, it's, it's really funny. I'm not sure if people, um, familiar with the TV show The Game that was on, C on the CW, it's now on BET. Yes. Well, with that being said, you go in there thinking, well, I play football, I play football in college, like, I'm going to kill this. Like, read the director, Derwin, that's me, Malik, that's me, I'm going in, I'm going to make it do, make it do, do baby. <laughs> uh, so, um, I went in there, and with Hollywood, 
even though I played football in college, it really has no weight in the Hollywood world because a lot of people who are calling the shots in Hollywood aren't necessarily football players themselves or, or, or even seen a football field. So their their take or their vision may not be what you might have experienced, even though it's it's real similar to what you've experienced. So you know you kind of get you, you kind of get caught up in that. But I think the bottom line is having that confidence in yourself to go in there and, and do a great job. And um, going in there as Derwin, I think w w what we've come to find out as far as how I got the role is that Mar Brock Akil, um, I Mara, um, creator of uh, The Game and Girlfriends, uh, she's working on Cougar Town right now and uh, has some films in the works. Um, she said that in creating this, creating this, the world of the game and writing the, these characters you know, to life in a sense. Um, she's like, I knew, I knew what Derwin was. I created Derwin. So she said, I knew you were Derwin when you walked in. And I saw both takes, Malik and Derwin. It's not that you're good, but you're Derwin in a sense where what happens with Derwin is that he's a good kid, young kid, who wants to do the right thing but makes mistakes. And I think that's all part of growing. That's all part of life is, um, is learning from your mistakes and growing. Uh, but for the most part, um, Derwin's um, upbringing is um, he was raised by his grandmother. Um, hopefully, we get to see in the fourth season a little bit of Derwin's world. Is what I'm hoping. I'm hoping for. Um, I know a lot of people always ask me and always will put on the grounds that we want to see what it was like with Derwin uh, growing up and so forth. Um, but with that being said, with that being said, she said you had this quality about you that was uh, a real quality of goodness that. That's who Derwin was, where, you know, we want a guy who, who was likable, who, who could get the job done, like when it came time to say, hey, okay, so I'm strapped on the helmet, you're going in. You know, I went in there as Derwin, and was, you know, I would get the first down, I would score the touchdown, I would make people say, hey, okay, this kid, really, he, he got skills. And um, so I think that with Mara creating the show and the character, she allowed me to show a wide range of um, skills as far as my acting ability. And, and to go there, and as far as like your acting ability, you always reach back into certain times in your life, whether it's a dark time, a happy time, sad time, to help you get to where you need to get to in a scene, and to make sure the audience isn't cheated and feels uh, connected. Okay. Uh, the game, like CW, and it was canceled, now we have it on BET, so they're bringing back a new season on BET? Well, when we got canceled on the CW, um, to answer your question, it is yeah, yes, um, the game is officially coming back, you guys. Yes! You heard it here. Um, we just recently uh, was in New York, uh, the cast, to announce the game coming back and finalize all our deals. Uh, the, only, the only person who has an open kind of like deal because he's on a new show, I mean, I'm actually on a new show too, uh, is Kobe Bell, who is Jason Pitts. Okay. And um, uh, hopefully... Which, from what I hear, he's going to be allowed to do the game in addition to Burn Notice, which is only going to help. It's only going to help us as far as you know, when Burn Notice comes out, he can start plugging, plugging uh, the game and just stay tuned into that. And uh, I'm still waiting for Accidentally on Purpose, which is uh, also a Paramount Studio uh, production. Um, which once the game got canceled, they gave me my second, my next job, my big high profile job. Um, on CBS, we just finished uh, about a month and a half ago, so we're just waiting, waiting for exactly um, actually get picked up for a second season. So I did close my deal with the game in second position because once the game canceled and was done, I got a new contract. So okay. we have to see what happens with that. So, okay. um, but there is going to be the fourth season. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly what. Uh, is going to happen or where, we, where we're going to start or begin or leave off. Um, I can't see us not picking up, um, you know, from the wedding or the hospital. And stuff. Okay. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy Pootal here doing the real B.I.G. out here in Indianapolis with my man Jerome. And you're watching HipHopStories.net.